Hey guys, check this out. This is the latest, greatest technology for Motorola. We've got the lights, we've got the computers, we've got the voice commands. You're watching it all on the talk of San Diego where we're gonna explore this new car. And if we play our cards right, we might get to shoot some people. Hey guys, this is Laura with the Talk of San Diego. Today we're here with Anatoly and he's going to show us all about the new Motorola cop car. So Anatoly, tell me what are we looking at? What does this computer and all these buttons and everything in the car do? Sure, well let me first say, let's notice what you're not looking at. You're not looking at really a whole raft of equipment. You're, uh, you're actually sitting in a real working passenger seat so it's not intruding on, on where you're sitting. But the whole idea behind this is it's equipment that's uh, got two goals in mind, only two. One is to keep the officer safer when they're on the street patrolling. The other one is to keep them more effective. And both of those have to do with, uh, with being able to just kind of pay attention to the streets, not overly focus on the technology, and, uh, be, and let the technology take care of itself. Now will, so is this car mostly operated by robots? Um, it can be if you want it to be, if you can find the robot to drive it, but it's really meant for real life uh, officers that are on the streets today. And what do, what do these two cameras do up here? They record those uh, nice videos that sometimes you see on, uh, on TV shows. Uh, so they record what happens when the car is driving around. They also allow the car to transmit that information back to headquarters. So people can act so that, uh, for example, a commander or a dispatcher can actually see the situation that the officer is in. They're not just dependent on them describing it for them. We've heard that this car can do license plate recognition. How does that work? So the way that works is uh, there are four cameras sitting on top of the roof of the, on the roof of this car. They're right around the light bar, and they continually scan every license plate that uh, that comes into view and they can automatically alert the officer if, uh, let's say, they just passed a stolen car or a car is somehow otherwise dangerous. Okay, so can we try out the license plate scanning feature? Sure, we, uh, we can certainly do that. So, for example, we're in a parking lot right now. Um, so ordinarily, you could see an officer that maybe is just driving along and very slowly punching in plates. What I'm going to do instead is just uh, kind of, you know, I'm going to keep my eye on the road, I'm looking out for these pedestrians, and I'll just drive at a normal speed for a parking lot. And you can see on the screen that, uh, the, that the plate reads uh, continue to happen. Right? And you can see that there's uh, the plate numbers being displayed in the photo of the car, and also uh, we get the location of the car. So that if uh, there happened to be a stolen car here, or a car belonging to uh, a wanted felon, or you know, a car that's uh, otherwise somehow of interest, the officer would then be alerted by the, uh, by the computer. And how, how does the computer alert? Oh, it has this really nice, loud, annoying siren. <laughs> now, did Motorola completely design this car? Is this an entirely Motorola car? Or who made this car and did Motorola just add all these features? Well, the, the car itself, uh, we, worked with, uh, we worked with several auto manufacturers. This one happens to be Ford. This is Ford's uh, latest uh, car for the patrol market. And then the technology in here is a combination of, of Motorola technology, for the most part, and some technology that comes from our partners. Uh, and, and some of it is actually fused together. So, for example, this computer is uh, that's Motorola built and designed. And then there are components inside the computer that come from a third party manufacturer that actually does the license plate recognition and does some of the other some of the other cool things that this car is capable of. All right, we're gonna take a short break and when we come back, we're gonna see what else this car can do. What do you do when you're 3,000 miles from New York and you're jonesing for some wings? Now, not just any wings, but New York Buffalo Wings. That's easy. Stop on by your nearest New York Buffalo Wings. Located in La Mesa, San Diego, and Imperial Beach, you're just minutes away from mild, hot, or make you cry like a baby hot sauce. Wings, fall off the bone ribs, and fire hot chicken tenders. To find the nearest New York Buffalo Wings, go to nywingsandribs.com. That's nywingsandribs.com. The Talk of San Diego would like to remind the viewing audience that this is Breast Awareness Month, and we here at the Talk of San Diego are doing our part for this very important cause. 
Hey guys, we're back to the talk of San Diego. I'm here with Anatoly and he's showing us a little bit about the buttons on the new Motorola cop car. So Anatoly, tell us a little bit about all this new layout of the inside of this car. So Laura, I don't know how many patrol cars you've been in. I'm not saying you've been inside of any. But uh, typically, if uh, you see the center console, like the center console here, there's usually rows and rows and rows of buttons and switches that go all the way down the length of the center console. And uh, so you can picture an officer in an emergency trying to locate what's the correct button to turn the lights on, turn the siren on, do whatever they need to do. Um, sometimes they have to kind of reach backwards over here. In the meantime, they're trying to keep an eye on the road. What uh, Motorola Solutions has done is work with thousands of officers really all across the world to figure out what's the most optimal way to arrange uh, these controls and put them in a compact uh, form factor. So uh, what we have here with, uh, with this interface is something that can drive the lights, the siren, the radio, even the gun locks and uh, make them capable and make the car easier to operate so that an officer in an emergency doesn't have to look for that knob or that switch. They can simply grab the biggest knob on here, crank it all the way to the right, and that turns on the lights, right? Or the siren, or, or whatever they need, they need it to do. So it's a solid control. They don't have to be fishing for it. They just know that no matter what happens, you can just grab it and off they go. Or they can use their voice, too. So there's always multiple ways of, uh, of operating every control that's in here, just because it depends on the situation, depends on what they need to do. Uh, one way may be better than the other way. So we have things like the voice activation where if I say pursuit, that'll also activate the, the lights and the siren on the vehicle, right? Or I can also switch software and do other things with the same voice activation feature. Even things like those, uh, those uh, very familiar concepts like using microphone, right? How many times have you seen uh, on TV where the officer grabs a microphone and actually, you know, ta talks into the microphone and says something, you know, like to acknowledge, uh, acknowledge a call. Well, you saw me actually, I was trying to remove this. This is really for the partner. What, uh, what we've done here is we've built the push to talk button into the steering wheel. So all the officer has to do is actually just keep driving, keep both hands on the steering wheel. And uh, if they need to acknowledge a radio call, they simply push down and that's their push to talk. That's their microphone. So now, what are the what are these for? I know these aren't real guns, but in the in the actual car, will there be real guns in place right here? Yes, there would be. A, there's a real rifle and shotgun back here, and the whole idea is also to uh, to be able to show that you can open the gun locks. These are ordinarily locked down, but in an emergency, the officer can actually open the gun lock. And what will happen is because this is all integrated into the car, their dispatcher or uh, their supervisor can know that hey, this officer has has found a need to remove the you know the large weaponry from the vehicle and they can turn on the cameras they can uh, they can check uh, for whatever it is you know what has caused them to do that and again getting back to that safety and effectiveness of the officer right so other than these two cameras right here how many cameras are on this car there's a total of seven cameras inside this car there are these two cameras that capture video in front, one points forward for the traffic, one points to the right for uh, field sobriety tests on the side of the highway so that the sobriety test doesn't have to happen in front of the car. There's also a camera that points at the back seat to monitor the passenger in the car when they're being transported to, uh, you know, to booking or wherever they need to be taken. And then there are four license plate recognition cameras on top of the car. So all of that information comes in and is then integrated and can be distributed to the command center. And so what are, what are these up here for? Uh, so this is a light. This is, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to it, it's the light that helps them fill out their documentation. It's built into the car likewise here. There's also two microphones in the car. This one is for when I'm pushing down on the, uh, on the push to talk button. That's the microphone for the radio. And then for my voice commands, that's the microphone up here. So that that's what lets me talk and uh, in, interoperate with the car in, uh, in the easiest way that, that we can make it. Okay, so aside from all of this new technology on the inside, what else is new technology on the outside of the car? Um, so the new technology on the outside of the car, it's, uh, it, it's really still on the inside, but it's how it's integrated into the car itself. So if, uh, when, when we look at the trunk, I'll kind of show you how Unlike a typical patrol car, the equipment really stays out of the way. It stays safe. It lets them put all of their 
other non-electronic equipment, their fire extinguishers, their stop spikes, whatever they need to have, uh, but lets our equipment to continue to operate and stay out of the way. All right, can we go check out the trunk? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, Anatoly's going to show us the trunk of the Motorola cop car. You're watching the talk of San Diego. Utilizing medical doctors, physical therapists, and chiropractors all working together to better your health, Silver Strand Spine and Sport is committed to providing the most personalized, integrative, and skilled physical therapy services available. With sensitivity and compassion, we work with our patients to promote physical rehabilitation in a professional and caring environment. Located on Palm Avenue in Imperial Beach, we offer South Bay the finest care for all your physical needs. For an appointment, call 619-575-575. 8887. Don't forget to podcast the talk of San Diego and take us wherever you go. Let people know you're somebody. Hey everyone, welcome back. You're watching the talk of San Diego. I'm here today with Anatoly. He's showing us all about the new Motorola cop car. Anatoly, will you tell us what is in the trunk of the new cop car? Sure, Laura. Uh, so everything that this car does really operates on a few pieces of equipment, namely just about four. Uh, so there is the radio over here. That's also what operates the lights and siren. This is the CPU for the computer. Yeah, so you saw the keyboard and the monitor, but uh, that's a CPU, and it's kind of like your desktop computer at your office, but made to be rugged. So it can withstand uh, heat, cold, vibration, sand, dust, whatever, whatever a patrol car typically faces. And we've seen them, we've deployed them in Arizona, we've deployed them in Canada, so they're really very, very, uh, very rugged and robust. And then this is the in-car video recorder. So when all those video cameras are, are coming in, that's where that video is stored. Ordinarily, it's, uh, it's locked. That's why there's a key because, hey, it's evidence, right? Once you've captured that video, it, it can't go away until it gets to the police station. And most importantly, um, once the, when the car is in operation, all of this needs to be out of the way because police officers have other equipment that has nothing to do with electronics. So when, uh, when we're ready to roll, they simply put up the shelf, lock it down, and off they go. All right. Thanks, Anatoly, for showing us all around the Motorola cop car. You're watching the talk of San Diego, and we'll see you next time. My pleasure. Hey, guys, was that cool or what? We learned about the latest, greatest technology from Motorola. Thanks for tuning in. You're watching the talk of San Diego, and we'll see you next time.